I'm recording. Hope so anyway. Let's just double check my screen. Yep. Okay, we're going we're going live here. Okay, this is going to be a really unusual video and it may well be a collection of videos that all relate to the same topic. So it's effectively part one of a possible series that's entitled Don't Take My T3 Away Video Diary. Okay, so dwell on that for a minute. My name's Paul Robinson. Um, I'm the author of three thyroid books. The most recent one is a thyroid patient's manual. Uh, my first one was Recovering with T3, and I followed that one up with the CT3 handbook. But CT3M handbook before doing the recent one of thyroid patients manual. So that's who I am. I work online with thyroid patients. I have done for many years and I do some private consults as well. Um, I've been on lithyronine, um, or T3 only, um, for about 20 years. I take 60 micrograms a day. I take this UK lithyronine the one that's been in the press, the one that's caused all the problems with the pricing. Um, and it works. Um, basically on, on levothyroxine, when I was in T4, which I was for about seven years, um, I just got more and more ill. All my hypothyroid symptoms remained. Um, and uh, I ended up basically having to sleep for multiple hours a day trying to stay in work but often i would be passing out through low cortisol issues as well as i start with thyroid issues and uh, i worked less and less and less and eventually they medically retired me because they thought i was dying my doctor thought i might be dying um i'd lost nearly 30 percent of my body weight i'd gone down from about 12 stone 12 and a half stone to about eight stone or just over eight stone weight um I'm not going to convert that in my head to pounds for those in America, but basically I lost 30% of my body weight and I was already relatively slim to start with. Um, and I was just desperately ill, fatigue beyond belief on levothyroxine. I couldn't go up the stairs without having to stop part way on my hands and knees. It was that bad. And when I wasn't in work, I would try to do a few little jobs, including going out to do a little bit of shopping with a little shopping bag. And, and often I'd be so ill, I'd have to sit down in a store somewhere on a chair and maybe sometimes ring for a taxi to get me home because I was that bad. So it was dreadful. And I and, and eventually worked out that I needed T3. I persuaded my uh, GP to give me a trial. And I shortly afterwards saw an endocrinologist, a really good endocrinologist, I thought at the time. Um, and having seen many who were just didn't get it. They all just told me my labs were normal and I had chronic fatigue syndrome or ME. Anyway, I was on T3. The endocrinologist agreed I need to be on T3 and I slowly got well. I had to work out how to use it, which is all in my book, Recovering with T3. But that's how it happened. It took me about 10 years to get well. I lost 10 years of my life from about, about age 30 onwards. And, and then even after that, it took me several years to, um, to get really fit again. Okay, so what's happening in the in the UK? Well, we've got this issue for one thing with the UK um, lithiumine product, um, and it, the price has gone up basically because it used to be a gen, it used to be a a non generic uh, T3 produced by GlaxoSmithKline. It paid, the patent ran out. They sold the rights to this to another company. And that company has basically been price gouging ever since. They've upped the price and doubled the price and doubled the price and doubled the price. And so it goes until this thing here is, I'm not sure exactly how many hundreds of percent now higher than it is anywhere else in the world. But on the continent, France, Germany, uh, and other places in Europe and in the US, almost everywhere, T3 is a relatively inexpensive drug. In the UK, it is not. It's very expensive. Our local area authorities, known as clinical commissioning groups, or CCGs, don't like it. It costs them a lot of money per patient. They're trying to cut down on what it costs. But also, 
there's a mistaken understanding amongst many endocrinologists that T3 isn't required. Now that's a bit weird because I actually got really well on it and I've taken T4 a few times since um, I went on T3 and it makes me ill every single time. And I know this is true for many, many, many other patients. Some endocrinologists though think T4 monotherapy, thyroxine or synthroid monotherapy is always required and it always converts very well to T3, the active hormone. That's it, they even worry about the active hormone and that's all that's needed. And of course, synthroid or levothyroxine um, T4 is a lot cheaper than myothyronine T3. So, what's happening in the UK? Well, the endocrinologists and the CCGs um, want a lot of thyroid patients, you know, they'd, I think they'd rather have all of them, but a lot of them certainly off any T3, even the ones who are taking a small amount with T4 in combination, off T3 and back on T4 monotherapy because it's cheaper. And as I said, some of the endocrinologists, a lot of the endocrinologists don't believe T3 is needed. T4 monotherapy always works, which it does not. And I've written about that so much in all my books and on my website, which is recoveringwitht3.com. So that's the situation. Um, why am I doing this series of videos called don't take my T3 away, video diary. Why am I bothering? Well, okay, let me put my glasses on for this. Just to say, I am not immune to what's happening in the UK. I am not immune. I am not special and just another thyroid patient. So on October 10th, I received this letter. You can just about see it, the back of it. I'm not gonna name doctor's names. I'm not gonna say which area of the country I'm in. I'm just going to say I got this letter on the 10th of October and I'll read it to you without, without again implying who the doctor is or anything else. Dear Mr. Robinson, re-liothyronine, I would appreciate if you could fill in the thyroid symptoms score enclosed as we have been asked by the Clinical Commissioning Group, CCG, to review our prescriptions of thyrothyronine. If you could return these to the surgery as soon as possible, we then, you can then complete our audit of liothyronine prescriptions. The reason for this audit by the CCG is that, as you are probably aware, liothyronine is a very expensive medication. Well, it is because the NHS has screwed up the management of its price and not got a cheaper supplier. That's why it's expensive. Slight diversion there. He doesn't say that here. Liothyronine is a very expensive medication. It is not recommended that it should be used routinely in the management of hypothyroidism as there is insufficient population-based clinical evidence to show that the combination therapy is superior to levothyroxine monotherapy. I actually have produced material based on actual research to show why previous uh, cl cl clinical research trials have not shown any correlation between the benefit of T3, the use of T3 and patient health. And there are very good reasons for doing that. Um, and that's present in some of my other work. And it's based, based on the fact that previous clinical trials were flawed, utterly, totally flawed. And they, were, they, they, they just need to be redone properly, okay? Based on the new research that is out there. Okay, so there's insufficient population-based evidence to show that the combination therapy is superior to levothyroxine monotherapy. Once we have obtained the data, it will then be reviewed by the consultant endocrinologist the consultant endocrinologist, and if necessary, they may ask to see you, yours sincerely, etc. So, um, that was my call up, my wake up call. That basically, I'm now being going to be scrutinized, much like many, many other thyroid patients in the UK, and I know many who are doing really well on T4, T3 combination therapy, all on T3 only, and they've had their T3 removed. Now, I don't know who the consultant endocrinologist is. I don't know whether they're just a stooge for the CCG who's just basically going to have a, you know, conclude that T4 monotherapy is all that's needed and that this guy should go on it. I don't know. All I can tell you is when I got the letter, um, I was probably fairly unwell for three to five days. 
and the blood pressure went up. I was very, very, very stressed to the point I couldn't think straight. Um, I felt generally unwell, I felt dizzy, um, I felt sick. Um, I need T3 to stay well. I was sick for too long to start with and I absolutely need it. And yet now, like so many other patients um, across the UK, I'm under the threat of that, have, that being taken away from me after so many years of being fairly well on it, very well on it. Okay, so I have written a response. Um, I, I've written a response. Uh, again, I'm not going to mention any names. Dear Doctor, this is a quick response to the letter that you dated 9th of October 2019, requesting completion of the GP questionnaire and the thyroid symptom score. In it, you state that you have data that, so that you need the data so you can complete your audit of levothyroxine. You state that once you have the data, the consultant endocrinologist will review it. I'm working on the information requested, but I have some concerns that need addressing prior to my returning on the information. Please explain what the nature of the audit is. Are you simply reviewing the patients involved, or are you returning information to the CCG? Can you confirm that only you, your office staff, and the consultant endocrinologist selected by you, that's important, will see the personal data that I will return? I would not be happy for anyone on the CCG to see my response or to have an endocrinologist selected by the CCG to look at my data and assess whether I ought to be on liothyrin or not. Their cost-motivated bias against liothyrin is well documented. I wait to hear back from you. Kindest regards. I have other things that I've written that are going to be follow-ups if necessary and particularly will be looking in detail at how I can use data protection laws to help work for me on this. I won't take it lying down, but I am extraordinarily apprehensive about what's going to happen. And that's why I thought I would do this video diary uh, called Don't Take My T3 Away. And um, I'm doing it because it will, when it's finished, whichever way it goes, it will provide a history of what happens to one patient. I'm not special. I'm not saying I am. I just want it documented. I want it out there so people can see what's happening and how it affects people. Okay, that's why I'm doing it. I'll do the next one soon. I don't know how it's going to go. I am actually very concerned. So there we are. It's a right old mess here in the UK. And it needs to get sorted out because T3 is needed. It's obvious it's needed. The past clinical research was flawed. And the price of this thing needs to get sorted out by the NHS. Simple as that. Okay, bye for now. I'm a bit worried here. I'm not saying where I am, by the way. Bye for now.